Well, good morning everyone. <clears throat> Today we are going to talk about trench MOSFETs. This is lecture number 28. Uh, want to again acknowledge the support of my colleague Dr. Arash Salami and the support from Office of Naval Research. So, last time we had talked about superjunction MOSFETs and today we will talk about the trench MOSFETs. <clears throat> so, on the right hand side we show the trench MOSFET and on the left hand side we so show the planar D MOSFET and you can see that in the trench MOSFET we have a trench and we form the channel in the vertical direction whereas this is the gate oxide, this is the gate polysilicon. So, the current flows from N plus source along the channel down into the drift region and spreads and goes down to the substrate. Looking at the planar D MOSFET, we had current going through a lateral channel under the gate, going through the JFET region and then going down into the drift. So, one of the big advantages of making it this way is that we have no real JFET region in this structure. Also, we can shrink the cell size quite a bit because we have no JFET region. Then we can make lot more small MOSFET channels per unit area by reducing the pitch and that means we get more channel, more gate channels per unit area and that reduces the are on for both silicon and silicon carbide devices and since P type region is epitaxially grown as opposed to implanting it here, we can easily make submicron channel lengths by just growing a thinner P epi. In the D MOSFET, that channel length here is determined by photolithography or some self aligned method, but it is not easy to make it very short channel. Whereas here we can make a very, very short channel, even 0.1 or 0.2 micron if we like. So, those are the advantages. The disadvantage is there is a high electric field at the trench corner where the laser pointer is and this is not ok for silicon carbide, but ok for silicon. So, almost most of the silicon devices use the trench method because of these advantages and they are not affected by high field at the corner and the reason is silicon's breakdown field is about 0.3 mega volt per centimeter and even if we multiply by factor of 3 to get the field in the oxide, it is less than 1 mega volt per centimeter for the oxide. So, the oxide is pretty safe because it has lower breakdown, lower applied field even due to the corner. But in silicon carbide, if we use 2 mega volt per centimeter here, the field in the oxide would be 6 mega volt per centimeter, which is very, very uh, unreliable for gate oxide. So, in silicon carbide, 
design, we have to reduce the electric field at this corner and over the years many designs have come up and uh, we will discuss a few of them. So, in terms of on resistance as we did for planar DMOSFET structure, you can see that current flows from source through the channel down through a little accumulation region and then spreads and then goes down. So, we can calculate the specific on resistance of the channel and then of the drift layer and the substrate. We can neglect this little resistance in the accumulation layer and we do not really have a JFET region. So, so, similar to what we had discussed for the planar D MOSFET, the channel specific on resistance is given by this. P is the pitch of the cell, L channel is the length of the channel, V T is the threshold voltage and C ox is the oxide capacitance and mu inversion is the inversion layer mobility of electrons as we discussed for the planar D MOSFET lecture. And again mu inversion is little better in the vertical direction in silicon carbide than the lateral direction in planar D MOSFET. So, we have a little bit of advantage it could be something like 25 along the vertical plane which we call A plane. <coughs> so, mobility is slightly higher, but nevertheless the we want to keep the oxide capacitance high by thinning the gate oxide to reduce the channel resistance and we want to reduce the pitch and of course, the channel length to reduce the channel resistance. The drift layer resistance is a spreading resistance. So, you can again calculate that by integrating the current flow along 45 degrees angle and as we did for D MOSFET get you get this equation here where rho D is the res resistivity of the drift layer doping, P is the pitch and W T is the half width of the gate as shown there and T is the thickness of the drift layer and W M is the is basically uh, this dimension here and the substrate resistance is simply given by substrate resistivity which is generally 18 milli ohm centimeters times the thickness of the substrate. And as we had discussed for low voltage devices where the substrate resistance could be important, we want to reduce this T substrate by thinning the substrate. To reduce the drift layer resistance of course, we want to make the pitch as small as we can and we want to increase the doping in the drift layer as much as we can for a given breakdown voltage. And generally the drift resistance is very, very small in low voltage devices such as 900 volt, 1200 volt devices and it increases as we increase the IP thickness for higher breakdown voltage devices. So, we can calculate all that that is easy and this uh, part is taken from Professor Baliga's lectures. He has done precisely that. He has calculated the specific on resistance in milli ohm centimeter square versus the channel length on the x axis for a breakdown voltage of 1.4 kilo volt, which means the drift layer is doped at 1 e 16 per centimeter cube and it is 12 micron thick and the half pitch of the cell is 0.5 micron 
and you can see as we increase the channel length, channel resistance goes up linearly, substrate resistance is fixed, drift layer is fixed, total resistance is shown here. Also, Professor Baliga assumed a channel mobility of 25 centimeter square per volt second, which is slightly higher than the planar DMOSFET which would be in the plane of the wafer. This is 25 along the vertical direction. So, you can see that even for 1 micron channel length, your specific on resistance is very, very small. It is about 1 and 1.4 milliohm centimeter square. And I think it has been assumed that substrate has been thinned down to some number like 150 micron. So, you can see that it is already very competitive with planar DMOSFET. In fact, it is lot better than planar DMOSFET for 1.4 kV devices. For two reasons, the pitch is very small and the vertical mobility is higher than one in the x direction. So, trench MOSFETs make sense up to 1700 volt devices. Above 1700 volt devices, the drift layer resistance dominates, which is this guy here, and therefore. Uh, there is probably no advantage of making the channel, uh, the trench MOSFET. So, 1700 volt and below trench MOSFET makes sense. It makes a lot of sense for 900 volt and 600 volt devices. Above 1700, it does not make any sense. So, number of structures, this is courtesy of uh, <coughs> Harshita Gupta at NC State, uh, I am using some of her PowerPoint files. Um, so, this is the structure she presented. This is a shielded fin shaped gate uh, from this publication down here. And here is your trench, and here is the gate which looks like the fin. But the whole idea is to reduce the field at this corner. Here is the n plus source, the channel is formed here, and these authors are calling this region as JFET region. It is really not the JFET region because uh, this area would be essentially accumulated. But as I said, trench MOSFETs do not have a JFET region unless we create one. So, in this case, they have implanted a P shield right here, and this P shield is grounded along with the source contact. So, this is source contact, and this is source number 2 contact, these are connected together. <coughs> so, Depending upon this dimension, which uh, we call as L of, we can reduce the electric field at this corner. If we reduce this dimension, then we certainly reduce the electric field at this corner, because the depletion from <coughs> the P shield at high breakdown voltages will compete with and merge with the depletion from the P base into this region. <coughs> and the two together, the P base region and the P shield region will work together to reduce the electric field here at high drain voltages. So, we can compare three different structures. The first structure is a trench MOSFET and we call it conventional trench uh, CMOS. Then this is the structure proposed by Rome and Rome is actually marketing these devices with this structure. Again, there is a P shield which 
is grounded and that P shield reduces the field at this corner, but in order for this to be effective, we need to reduce this uh, distance. And then this is the <coughs> shielded fin structure we talked about uh, in the previous view graph. So, depending upon these dimensions L mesa and L off, we can reduce that electric field which is shown in the in the next two view graphs. So, this is where we do the comparison of the three structures. All the structures have 7 micron of drift layer doped at 7.5 times 10 to the 15. Trench depth is 1 micron, gate oxide thickness is 50 nanometers. They have considered a lower channel mobility of 11 centimeters square per volt second, but that does not make us any difference to <coughs> what we are talking about. And they have considered Harshita is considered channel length of 0.4 microns. And in the shielded mass structure, the doping in the JFET is considered to be 2 times 10 to the 16. So, then we have biased these devices at 600 volts and we are looking at the electric field at the corner of the trench and you can see the trench conventional trench MOSFET has very high electric field in the off state and I think we are looking at the field in the off side. Uh, so, here is the double trench MOSFET from Rome and you can see that this field is still high and this is the shielded fin structure where the field is below 3 mega volt per centimeter. So, we can conclude that shielded fin structure has the lowest field at the corner which means it is a better structure to make. Even in double trench structure, if we reduce this distance quite a bit, then this would become similar to the shielded fin structure. But for now, shielded fin structure seems to be very effective in reducing the field at the corner. <clears throat> there is another way of shielding the trench MOSFET and that is by putting a P plus region under the trench like shown here and this shield is connected to the source and grounded under high voltage and it very effectively controls the electric field uh, at the trench corner. This was patented by Professor Baliga in 1993 that information is shown here at the bottom of the page and this these notes <coughs> have been taken from Professor Baliga's uh, book uh, cited here and his lecture notes. So, basically this P plus shield is uh, added below the trench bottom and it must cover the corner of the trench. And of course, now we have two P type regions P base and P plus shield. So, the point B actually now becomes the JFET region because the N region there will be depleted from two sides from the P base and the P plus shield. So, the current will flow from a very narrow path here. So, the current will flow from source down through channel through this pinched region through the J fat and then down. Uh, the P base width can be reduced to decrease the specific on resistance that means we just basically reduce the channel length here. All right. So, this is also a very good structure, a bit difficult to make, will take some extra steps, but electrostatically speaking, this is a very 
good structure and this simply shows that <clears throat> when the current flows, it flows through this narrow path here, which we are calling as the JFET region. So, presumably it does a good job in shielding the electric field at the corner, but it introduces the JFET region, which will increase the uh, on resistance and that the same thing is showing shown in the simulation here. These contours represent the uh, current flow and you can see how the current is pinched between the two P type regions. But it is a good, good structure, it is very effective in reducing the field at the corner. Uh, this structure is actually patented by Infineon and they have a product in silicon carbide with the structure on the right hand side where they have. So, on the left hand side we show a planar DMOSFET structure that we have been talking about. Here is a trench MOSFET that we have shown except one half of the trench, one side of the trench we have a deep P plus implant which is grounded. So, now we only use one side of the trench but we shield the corner here very effectively by this P plus and this P plus here. So, again there is a little bit of J fed region which can in increase the on resistance, but effectively this structure works very well. Also we are not using the one side of the trench for con current conduction, so it on resistance can go up also, but it allows us to shrink the pitch of the cell and then you can put lot of these cells in a given device area and therefore reduce the overall specific on resistance. So, again this structure is also commercial just like the double trench structure from Rome and both of these structures are good up to 1700 volt devices very effective in 600 volt, 900 volt, 1200 volt and less effective as we go to higher voltages. And I have given a, a, a reference here which you can look up to get more about these structures. Uh, this is a design I had done back in 1997 when I was at Northrop Grumman and you can see a planar trench MOSFET structure. Those days mobility in the channel was a big problem, but nevertheless we made one of the first trench MOSFETs in those days. We did not worry about protecting the corner of the trench and the mobility was really low but we could get uh, a good device operation uh, and I believe we got up to 600 volt breakdown voltages in these devices. Uh, the reference is given here, you can look at more details, but we essentially had the low channel mobility problem. Then uh, Professor Jim Cooper's group from Purdue presented a structure in 1998 where they had put a P plus uh, channel under the trench. So, when you put the P plus channel under the trench and ground it like I showed in Professor Baliga's pattern, this is very effective in uh, shielding the field at the corner. Uh, they had a 1400 volt MOSFET, it worked very well, much lower on resistance 15.7 million centimeters square and their channel mobility they estimated was between 9 to 30, but <clears throat> compared to the on resistance I had obtained. 178 milliohm centimeter square, the Purdue result is much, much better just a one year later. So, you can see how quickly the field evolves 
Another paper from uh, Purdue, from Professor Jim Cooper's group, and this time the similar structure of 5,000 volts, and we are getting a on resistance of 228 milliohm centimeter square. And again, you can read this paper and look at the design aspects of this paper. They have a P plus shield right under the trench to reduce the electric field. So, <clears throat> I think we can, there are more examples here which we can skip. Uh, this is the trench uh, MOSFET structure from Rome and again you can see that this is the one we talked about earlier. This is a commercial device and the first time they presented it was in 2014. Uh, so, in conclusion, I would say that uh, trench MOSFET for silicon carbide is a very viable device. It competes with planar DMOSFET structure up to 1700 volts and the main advantages are no JFET region, smaller pitch, lot of cells per unit area. So, overall on resistance is reduced. The difficulty <coughs> is in reducing the electric field at the trench corner, which is accomplished by the double trench uh, process from Rome and a very unique structure from Infineon. And certainly, P plus shield under the trench uh, from Purdue. So, with that, uh, let me stop here and next time we will talk about the next topic uh, when we see you again. Thank you.